It's extremely exciting to have the dual champion Palace Pier joining the Kelvin side roster for the 2022 breeding season. He is the best son of sire sensation Kingman and will become his first and only Group 1 winner to stand in Australia, presenting Australasian breeders with a wonderfully unique opportunity. An outstanding physical yearling, he was purchased by his trainer John Gosden at Tattersall's Book One for in excess of 1.1 million Australian dollars. He was an unbeaten two-year-old. As a three-year-old, he made his first foray into stakes company by defeating barnmate Pinatubo in the stallion making Group One St. James's Palace Stakes, etching his name alongside the likes of Shamadal, Frankel and Kingman. Palace Pier on the outside, it's just Pinatubo. Palace Pier though is still attacking. Wichita is rallying on the far side. And three way go on the St. James's Palace. And Palace Pier is getting up in the last few strides. And Palace Pier wins. He further emulated his sire by landing the Group 1 free Jacques Lemara. Those exploits saw him crowned champion three year old. As a four-year-old, he returned with an effortless performance in the Group 1 Lockinge Stakes and added another Royal Ascot success in the Group 1 Queen Anne Stakes, after which he was rated the best racehorse in the world. It's a two-length lead for Palace Pier, races the world to line and Palace Pier is the winner of the Queen Anne. He became the only back-to-back -back winner of the pre-Jacques Lemoyra this century and he retired as champion older horse with five top flight victories to his name. His jockey Frankie Dettori labelled him the best smiler he's ever ridden, and he's ridden a few. He epitomises what a thoroughbred athlete should be, effortless in his movement, and he physically takes your eye. Pure class. Palace Pier stands his debut season at stud here at Kelvin side for 55,000, including GST. James Cummings might eloquently state, you have to look at history to predict the future. To predict Victor Lodorum's future as a stallion, you have to look at his history, what he won, who else won those races, who he is by, who else is by that stallion, and who he is from, and what his pedigree might tell you. And when you combine all that information, you will predict with more than just a hunch that Victor Lodorum can, even will, become a leading international stallion. Firstly, the obvious. He is an elite racehorse, a dual Group 1 winner by a champion stallion from a successful female family. Surely, those are key ingredients in any stallion prospect. So how do we differentiate him from so many other stallion prospects? Well, he won his first two races easily, maiden and conditions races. Then, he stepped straight into Group 1 company in the Prix Jean-Luc Lagardier, France's oldest and most prestigious event for juveniles. A race steeped in history, won by the likes of Sir Ivor and Blushing Groom, and this century by Sayuni at Wooden Bassett, expensive, current, high-class stallions on the world stage. And Victor Ludora has picked up best to win the Lagardier and maintained his unbeaten record. Victor Ludora was a serious two-year-old talent. He was spelled and returned at three to run third in the Prix de Fontainebleau first up and win the Group 1 French Guineas second up. Victor Ludora goes on to win the Guineas. What a performance. French Guineas is of particular interest because by winning it, Victor Lodorum emulated his own sire, Shamadal, and his paternal half-brother, Lope de Vega. Shamadal, like Victor Lodorum, was an unbeaten Group 1 winning two-year-old. Lope de Vega, like Victor Lodorum, won his first two races, but he could only finish fourth in the Lagardier. Like Victor Lodorum, Lope de Vega was trained by André Fab. Victor Lodorum followed exactly the same path to Guineas glory as Lope de Vega did. History repeats itself. As you all know, Shamadal and Lope de Vega are two of the best stallions we've seen in recent times. And Victor Lodorum is just like them. Incidentally, in winning the Guineas, he also broke the track record for the mile at the famous Dover racetrack. This was a serious two and three-year-old racehorse. 
So we've established that he has a very similar racing profile to his own sire and his sire's best sire son. He is also similar to those great stallions physically. Strong, deep girthed, great hip and good movement. So all that's left is his female line. Well, he's actually from the same female line as his sire Shamadal and champion Street Cry. He's inbred to his third dam, Helen Street, just like Dane Hill was inbred to his third dam, Natelma. He has the Rasmussen factor in his pedigree, like Dane Hill, like Sir Tristram, and like Star Kingdom. Victor Lodorum has history on his side. The facts of history predict a very bright future for Victor Lodorum and for the people who send mares to him. After all, his name means overall winner of the games. Victor Lodorum stands at Kelvin side for a fee of $24,750, including GST. Here at Dali, we're in the very fortunate position to have access to and offer Australian breeders some of the best bred and best performed horses anywhere in the world. This next stallion certainly falls into this category. The accolades are many. Horse of the year as a two-year-old, the best juvenile for a generation, champion two-year-old colt in Europe, Europe's best juvenile for 25 years. I'd like to introduce Pinatubo. This exceptional son of Shamardal will be standing his first Southern Hemisphere season here at Kelvin side, and we are excited to show him to you. We are confident that he is the one to continue Shamardal's great legacy. He's out of the Dalakani mare Lava Flow from the family of Invincible Spirit and Kodiak. It's a pedigree rich in depth and performance. Pinatubo has been a model of consistency throughout his career and finished his two-year-old campaign a flawless six from six. He raced from May to October and emphatically announced himself on his third start, winning the Chesham Stakes at Royal Ascot, breaking the track record. In his next start, the Group 2 Vintage Stakes at Goodwood, he was again devastating and won by six lengths. Unbelievably, his best performance was yet to come. He demolished the field in the Group 1 National Stakes at the Curra, putting nine lengths between himself and his nearest rival. What a performance! Five is the magic number this weekend as Peter Tubo runs away with the Gosford's in O'Brien National Stakes. This performance was to earn him the moniker of genuine superstar in the racing post. He continued his winning ways with a tenacious win in the Group 1 Darley Dewhurst Stakes, the best race for two-year-olds in the UK. A race also won by his sire and Frankel, to mention just a few. Six from six, Peter Tubo wins by a couple. Pinatubo reappeared in June of his three-year-old year, finishing third in the 2000 Guineas, before coming second in the Group 1 St. James Palace Stakes to Palace Pier, both over a mile. Brought back slightly in distance to 1400, he added his third Group 1 to his resume with a super win in the Prix Jean Pratt at Deauville. Pinatubo is going to dig in here. He's digging in deep for victory, and Pinatubo gets the job done. He concluded his racing career in September 2020 with a credible second to Persian King in the Prix de Moulin de Longchamp again over 1,600. He retired to stud at Dalham Hall, covering his first book of mares in 2021. To date, he has covered seven Group 1 winners and 39 Group winners. All of the top breeders here in Australia are supporting him, and we look forward to seeing his progeny arrive in 2023. If the foals he's produced in the North are anything to go by, they'll have plenty of quality, strength and substance. Pinatubo stands at Kelvin side at a service fee of 55,000, including GST. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you world champion sprinter, Bivouac. He is a three-time Group 1 winner who amassed just shy of 5.7 million in prize money and all seven of his career victories came at stakes level. He was a multiple stakes winning juvenile. He landed the Group 3 Kindergarten Stakes and the listed Lonro plate. As a three-year-old, he emulated his legendary father, Exceed and Excel, by defeating the older horses in the Group 1 Newmarket Handicap up the Flemington Strait. His demolition of Loving Gabby, Gitra and Zutori by over two lengths was rated even higher than Exceed's performance 16 years earlier. 
That was in addition to a tenacious and resilient win in the Group 1 Golden Rose, where he gamely fought off Yes, Yes, Yes and Exceedance. It's Yes, 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 laying it down to Bivouac. Great finish. Yes, Yes, Yes. Bivouac comes back. Bivouac fights on and Bivouac wins the Golden Rose. Another one for Godolphin. He was crowned champion three-year-old in a generation that included Microphone, Loving Gabby, Exceedance, Yes, 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 Probabil, Alabama Express, Libertini and Castle Vestio. As a four-year-old, he enhanced his already lofty reputation. He was a fast finishing second to classique legend in the Everest, which was followed by an electrifying performance in the Sprint Classic back up the Flemington Strait, where he illustrated an explosive turn of foot that left Nature Strip, Libertini, Zutori and Santorana Lane in his wake. Bivouac with a powerful display. Oh, what a spectacular win. Dominant four legs Nature Strip, Libertini. His incredible achievements on the track were recognised internationally as he was crowned World Champion Sprinter for 2020. His attractive head and kind eye immediately grab your attention. As you watch him move, he is beautifully balanced, athletic and oozes class. In his first season at Stud, he was fully booked and covered some of the best mares in the land, including Group 1 winners Midsummer Music and Nicoletta, Shannara, a Group 2 winning full sister to Lonro, Accessories, the dam of Group 1 winners Helmet and Epilet, Group 2 surround stakes winner Gizzoni, Wichita, the dam of golden slipper winner Kiamichi, and Mielus, the dam of Group 1 Australian Cup and Group 1 Tancred stakes winner Jewess. We eagerly await the arrival of his first foals. No doubt they will possess his class, athleticism, and striking good looks. Bivouac stands his second season at Kelvin side for 66,000, including GST. Every so often in Australia, an exceptional group of gallopers comes along. Gallopers that progress from their own age group into the wait for age arena. The best juveniles of these crops invariably leave a big impression on the breed. I'm talking about crops that featured the likes of Redoute's Choice, Testarossa and Commands, or Stratum, Snitzel and Ritten Tycoon, or Piero and All Too Hard. The 2019 juvenile crop was a crop like one of those, possibly even deeper. Microphone, the horse parading now, was the best two-year-old in that 2019 crop. His peers included the likes of Bivouac, Exceedance, Yes, Yes, Yes and Castelvecchio, all commanding proper fees at high-profile studs. And the year also included the Phillies Probabile and Loving Gabby, proven Group 1 wait-for-age performers against the Colts. Microphone was the champion two-year-old of 2019, not just champion in any year, champion in an elite year. Microphone up the fence, Kiyomichi being challenged by Microphone, Castelvecchio deep out, Microphone from Castelvecchio, and Microphone's won the English side. With four wins from six starts, including a Group 1, a Group 2, and a listed race, and two seconds, including the Golden Slipper, he was clearly the best colt. An outstanding two-year-old, and we know the Australian market loves two-year-old speed. Microphone trained on at three to win at Group 2 level and be placed in the Group 1 Randwick Guineas, but he hangs his hat on his juvenile prowess, and that's what the Australian market wants. Microphone also has a pedigree to succeed. He's by Exceed and Excel, you know how good Exceed is, champion sire, worldwide influence, a breed shaper, the best sire of two-year-olds ever. And this is his best two-year-old son. He certainly has a claim to carry on the line. Microphone's oldest progeny have just turned one year old. They will head to the yearling sales next year. As weanlings, they have great heads, great quality, great strength, correct. That is the common theme. Microphone has the weight of some serious, astute and commercial breeders behind him. He also has all the advantages the powerful Godolphin racing team can give a stallion. He is brilliantly placed to etch his name into the history books as yet another champion stallion from the remarkable Danehill line. Microphone stands at Kelvin side at $33,000, including GST. This is too darn hot. 
His name aptly describes him. He's a Group 1 champion at two and at three. He's by Dubawi, a Group 1 champion himself, who is the best stallion ever in the UK and whose sons are already out there creating his legacy. And we're only at the beginning of this story. Dubawi is looking like becoming a great sire of sires. Tudon Hot's mother was a three-time winning Group 1 champion. Four if you include the one they took off her. Horses with Tudon Hot's credentials, Group 1 champions, by Group 1 winners, from Group 1 winners, are clearly coveted animals, and they often make the best stallions. Dubawi had these credentials, as did Galileo, and See the Stars, Deep Impact, and Street Cry, and Kingman had them as well. So did Roberto and Buck Passer and Never Ben. It's an exclusive club of breed-shaping stallions. But wait, there's more. In Tudon Hot's case, every one of his grandparents is a Group 1 winner. This is a very rare occurrence in the pedigree of any thoroughbred. None of the nine champions I mentioned just before can boast that. Tudon Hot's pedigree is just extraordinarily deep. I'll elaborate on his own ability though. At two, he was four from four, progressing from a maiden in August to a group three, a group two, and the group one championship do her stakes in early October. Maiden to group one champion in just nine weeks. And two Don Hot looking a very special two-year-old and wins easily. At three, his brilliance was again to the fore when he won the Group 1 Prix Jean Prat over 1,400 metres and the Group 1 Sussex Stakes over the mile at Glorious Goodwood. Whilst his female line might have suggested a trip of 2,000 metres, his aptitude was that of a brilliant, fast miler, a Ferrari McLaren type, according to his trainer, John Gosden. Speed was his game. That's what makes him so exciting for us in Australia. Good horses are not hard to promote and everyone recognises how good Tudon Hot is. That is why he filled in no time in his first two seasons with mares from all the best breeders and why he's fully booked again this season. He covered the best quality book afforded a new stallion in Australia in 2020 and with only limited representation at the Wheeling sales, those offered have already made a great impression, selling for as much as 300,000 in Sydney earlier this year. Feast your eyes on Tudon Hot. He has all the presence in the world and look at his free, elegant, beautiful movement. Then, when you have done so, go and have another look at his pedigree and his race record. Then you will understand why we are all so excited about him. What a mouth-watering prospect he is. Tudon Hot stands at a fee of 44,000, including GST. We're very excited to welcome Harry Angel back for his fourth and biggest season here at Kelvin Side world champion sprinter and highest rated sprinter to retire to Southern Britain for 30 years. To put it in context for our market here, his time form rating is higher than three Everest winners, Red Zell, Yes 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 and Classique Legend. He's the fastest son of champion sire Dark Angel, a stallion that started off very modestly and now stands for 60,000 euro in Ireland. Dark Angel was leading sire of two-year-olds in Europe in 2021, ahead of Wooten Bassett, Memus and Frankel in order of prize money. He won the Group 2 Mill Reef Stakes as a two-year-old at only his second start. He continued his winning form as a three-year-old, winning the Group 1 July Cup, beating Caravaggio and the Tin Man, among others. It's Harry Angel who wins the July Cup. He followed this up with a victory in the Group 1 Haydock Sprint Cup, leaving Blue Point and Tassleed in his wake. And Harry Angel, a class apart, wins the 32 Red Sprint Cup. He also added the Group 2 Sandy Lane Stakes to his tally as a three-year-old, setting a new course record. There's a theme beginning to emerge here. Harry Angel was very fast. As a four-year-old, he contested three Group 1s and won the Group 2 Duke of York Stakes. He retired sound and joined the stallion ranks at Dallam Hall Stud. It's been encouraging to see that Harry Angel has had a very promising start to his stud career in the North. Also notable, his first three winners are out of mares with a distinctly Australian flavour to their pedigrees. Those being mares by Encosta de Lago, Star Spangled Banner and Exceed in Excel. This would indicate that Harry Angel is likely to suit a wide range of mares in the Australian broodmare population. Breeders that supported Harry in his first season reaped the benefits at the yearling sales this year. Toryburn Stud sold a very nice colt to Roughwood Park for 460,000. Named Monte Braveheart, he's in training with Luke and Robert Price, so will be given every opportunity. 
Atanga Stud sold another nice colt to Bill Bain in Queensland for 380,000. He's in training with Billy Healy on the Sunshine Coast. Other trainers with Harry Angel progeny in their care include Chris Waller, Snowden Racing, Friedman Racing and Mark Newman. And of course, James Cummings. No shortage of good trainers there. Harry Angel stands at Kelvin side at a fee of 16,500, including GST. Earthlight by the great Shamadale out of the two-year-old winning Group 1 placed new approach mare, Winter's Moon. He was an unbeaten dual Group 1 winning two-year-old. A two-year-old that excelled over 1,100 metres to 1,200 metres. A speed two-year-old. In his two-year-old season, he went to the races five times, won all five, highlighted by the Group 1 pre morning over 1,200 metres at Deauville, before heading over to England to break the track record in the Group 1 Middle Park Stakes at Newmarket, also over 1,200 metres. He continued his winning ways as a three-year-old, saluting twice before finishing a very close second at Group 1 level over 1,400 metres. Trained by Andre Farb, the exceptionally talented Earthlight retired with a wonderful record of seven wins from nine starts. He was the champion two-year-old Colt in France in 2019. When you look at him physically, it is little wonder he had such an elite and precocious race record. Mid-size, deep girth, strong, powerful, great hindquarter, short cannons. Add to that a wonderful, relaxed temperament and a great walk. At the Magic Millions Broodmare Sale in 2022, Mayor's in Fall to Earthlight sold to 310,000. He is a stallion perfect for the rich two-year-old race series the Vobus Showdown, the Magic Millions, the English Series. A champion two-year-old, an unbeaten two-year-old, a speed two-year-old, a stallion that will get you a two-year-old. Earthlight stands at 22,000, including GST. the highest rated horse in the world in 2020 and the best ever son of breed shaping stallion Dubawi. There aren't many stallions to come to stud in Australia with the profile this horse has. And we are very proud to have a horse of his calibre standing here at Northwood Park in Victoria. Before he ruled the world, Gayath was the highest priced colt foal of his generation, a 1.1 million euro purchase who quickly made his mark winning two races at two, including the Autumn Stakes at Newmarket in stakes record time. And Gayath strides to the line to win by a couple. As an older horse, Gayath really hit his straps and went on to win not only four Group 1 races, he also posted three of the top four time form performances of 2020. He outclassed champion Enable in the Group 1 Eclipse Stakes and annihilated Magical and Lord North in the Group 1 Judmont International. And he's going to see them all off here in the Judmont. He's relentless. Gayard completes a great Group 1 hat-trick. It's no wonder he was crowned a multiple champion. To quote Charlie Appleby, he had speed, he had tactical pace and he could stay. Gayard won at two, at three, at four and at five. He was an absolute athlete who made seemingly light work of his rivals. As many people have commented after they watch his races, he broke their hearts. He is out of the blue chip mare and Group 1 winning daughter of Galileo, night time, and is a half-brother to champion filly Zakova. Clearly champions run in the blood. His 1.1 million euro price tag reveals that he is an outstanding type. He's got a remarkably deep shoulder and girth and moves beautifully over the ground and just look at those powerful hindquarters. He's balanced, athletic, has a beautiful head and an intelligent eye. He has a true presence and quality about him. His first mares in foal were understandably sought after this year in Australia, realising 260,000, 300,000 and 410,000 and we eagerly await his first foals in the Southern Hemisphere. He is bred on the same cross as fantastic miler Knight of Thunder who has made a tremendous impact at stud in recent years in both the Northern and Southern Hemispheres. Gayath, he was horse of the year and a champion with a champion's pedigree and champion looks. 
He stands his second season at Northwood Park for 27,500, including GST. Blue Point, such an exciting horse. He's by Shamadale and looks like Shamadale. He was a gun two-year-old. He won the Group 2 Gym Crack, was run up in both the Group 1 Middle Park and the Group 1 Dewhurst Stakes. And unlike many, he was tested and challenged, and he answered. He trained on to be a four-time Group 1 winner. An elite sprinter that raced for four consecutive years. A horse that won races at two, three, four, and five, and won 11 races in total. He won the races that mattered to Australian breeders. The Alquaz Sprint in Dubai, a race won by the likes of Buffering and Hortensia. Back-to-back -back King Stands at Royal Ascot, the race won this year by Nature Strip, and in previous years by Takeover Target, Schwarzier, Miss Andretti and Scenic Blast. And the Diamond Jubilee, won by Black Caviar and Star Spangled Banner. Blue Point all out, Dream of Dreams is thrusting, Blue Point near side, Blue Point! He is the only horse to win three Group 1 sprints at Royal Ascot. He was a true sprinter, a 1,000 metre to 1,200 metre horse. Physically outstanding, athletic, a terrific mover, deep, strong shoulder, fantastic hip, that kind eye, a great colour. And he is passing these attributes onto his stock. He has had winning results of 290,000 and 220,000 at the sales in 2022. Expect him to have a huge impact at the yearling sales in 2023. Blue Point, the perfect physical, precocious, fast, tough, sound, talented, by the right sire and the winner of the right races. He stands at 44,000, including GST.